Hey everybody, welcome back again. This is the Clay Golem and this is our Foundry VTT series where we're looking at all things Foundry, learning and playing together to try and make it as useful as we can for us as Dungeon Masters but also for our players and uh, make it enjoyable. In this video I'm going to look at another one of the add-ons that we may choose to use, hence I have the module management uh, window already open here. Um, so as I'm looking at these, I'm leaving on the ones we've already looked at okay so um, sometimes if you haven't been looking at the add-ons or you're jumping straight to one of these videos you might go hang on a minute why does his look different it might be because I've already got some of these switched on from where we've done videos and looked at them I haven't yet found any that I've gone hmm yeah okay interesting and then I've turned it off and decided not to use it uh, that might happen so what are we doing in this video? This video we are going to look at GM screen. Okay, so I'm going to tick the box next to that uh, and save module. And as always, it's going to reload for us. Da -da -da -da. There we go. Oh, really zoomed out on our our map of the uh, the Sword Coast there. Just zoom that in a bit. Um, just close this little D DDB importer update window, which pops up every single time okay uh, right gonna clear my chat as well don't need that done so what is the DM screen what's it actually do for us um, pretty much whatever you like is apparently that's kind of the selling point nothing appears to have changed but if we look right down here in the bottom right hand corner I know it's very small on my screen because it's high quite a high res monitor uh, we've got this little tag down here that says GM screen if I click on that <gasps> look look what happens it pops up so I've got all of these different cells on here that I can and if I hover over any of them it says drag and drop a journal entry a roll table an actor or item from either a world or a compendium so all of these are active little windows where I can throw information how good is that and you'll notice there's a main tab uh, just on the right here what can I do I can clear I can refresh, but I'm fairly sure I can add new tabs on. I um, wonder how I do that. Whoops, that's going to shrink it. Don't want to do that. Uh, is it a right, right click? Oh, look, right click on GM screen and we get this configuration. So it looks like we've got our main tab here with four columns, uh, three rows. Um, we can have that as shared. So I'm assuming that's shared with other players. Uh, and I've got an add button here so I can create another tab uh, let's call this one combat for example um, and again I can change the columns and stuff so let's save changes yeah look on the left I've got two tabs now so what do we want to use this for anything we like anything we like so important notes uh, let's try just a couple of things let's go to our journal uh, let's look at Stormwreck Isle and let's say we want something from Dragon's Rest for whatever reason I want the description from the uh, actually we haven't we did we did was it Seagro Caves we actually copied I think the fungus farm yeah we actually copied some information over so if we drag this fungus farm over directly and dump it there it's not going to fit at all big <laughs> that's all right <laughs> it doesn't matter because we can adjust all of these so yeah this is in here and we can go through these pages so can we what's this edit that's going to take us to the journal if i go to this little cog the top left of this window oh look how many rows do we want this span well let's have it span two columns that's a bit better in it yeah look we got that in there and uh, i'm actually going to for this demonstration at least make it two by two we've got our description our info our running combat bit we can still scroll that window within here and we've got the treasure thing that's what I copied directly from the manual and I just dumped it into that journal icon so if we want we can have these notes here that we need for a particular thing so I could for example have a tab that is all about um, <clears throat> excuse me that is all about the uh, Seagrow caves and I could have all of those descriptions up there if I wanted to that's quite nice I like that uh, would I use it for this purpose probably not I think I would use the journal entry and just pop that open when I needed it um, possibly shove it into another screen or something so I probably wouldn't put this on here but the important thing is you can if you want to and that's what this is about is working out what can we do what may work for you will be different what works for me 
Okay, now it mentioned here when we hovered over one about roll tables and we've not looked at roll tables yet, so we're not going to touch that. Actors or items. So let's take an actor. Let's take an important NPC, shall we? Lano Glassstaff, who's from a completely different module. But we can drop him in here. Oh, he's a bit squished and truncated. Uh, we can scroll it, but obviously that's not really what we want. But we can, again, we can say, well, actually, let's uh, let's make that two rows got a bit more information we can see most of his stuff here but actually because of the fact it's a character we can do that still not quite showing us everything we want but I can resize that character sheet and we've got a whole bunch of stuff in there let's see if we can make that super big um, and make sure it spans three rows yep now what is interesting is we've got his defaults and favorites but I can't see this bit I can't see a lot of this information that should be over here. I haven't got the tabs and stuff. Now that may be because um, we've had the update to version 3 of the D&D game engine, which introduced this new character sheet. So it could be that the DM, the GM screen sorry, doesn't, um, doesn't yet deal with that and it needs an update. Um, or it might be that this will never work. But principle is we can do that, which is great. All right. Sorry, Lano, you're out of here. Can we do it with a... Uh, let's pick a monster. What if we chuck a goblin in here? Ta-da! Okay, so because this is the original character sheet for monsters rather than the new player character sheet, this works much nicer. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's great. And we don't actually need as much space as we had before. So we can potentially say, actually, just give it one column span little bit squishy but uh, but yeah we got it all there we've got all the stuff we need we've got the dice rolls and numbers and things can we actually roll dice from in here we can look at that we can do skill checks directly from here as well so if you've got an area that you know has got multiple goblins in it for example um, rather than keep opening those you could just put it on here um, if we so just working on this we're playing again because that's what, what we do if i open Haley and i go to her default sheet i say i want it to be the legacy one and save that we get this version now if i take Haley and drag her in here i've got a legacy Haley character style character sheet in here which is really good um i can I'm just playing here stick with me just having a play um what if i dump Haley over there that's pretty much everything i need to see on Haley. so i could again nundro is going to be the other character sheet which is fine i can't change the character sheet type from in here but again i could just at the top here legacy character sheet thank you very much chuck nundro in here um make you span three rows Boom. so I potentially could have a tab for my party characters and if I need quick reference rather than double clicking on them I could just click that DM screen up it pops and I can see those individuals here that's one way I could use it I could have a tab for my party now obviously there's only kind of be enough for four characters here so if your party's bigger than that that might not work uh, open the full entity sheet so this edit looking button oh there we go opens the full thing well that's lovely so we know that that does that um, and of course we did that with the journal so that's one of the things we can do we can chuck journals on there we can chuck characters on there there was mention about ch chucking items so let's find one of those items um, I've got a staff of defense here what happens if I chuck that down there Brilliant, I've got the item description with the details. It's a bit squishy in the bottom right hand corner, uh, sorry, bottom left hand corner, um, just because of where we've got stuff. Um, but yeah, we can do that. Now I might get rid of that column. Um, can I make this? Let's just see how it deals with me now saying this needs to be two. Yeah, it's not trying to do anything particularly weird, which is good. <laughs> which is good can I drag the staff of defense once it's in here to another area no I can't so where I drag it is where it's going to stay that's not a problem just just working out just testing so I'll get rid of it down there I can have it up here which is a bit better 
uh, sort of spatial uh, I can have it only one column there we go I've got my staff of defense so I've got characters I've got items I've got all of those things and of course even if I am dropping things like in down here and it's like oh I can't really see the stuff very well all I need to do is do that and it pops out so straight away I can access more information so I could just have a number of referenced things down here ready to pop out nice and quick saves me going to the item tab finding it amongst potentially an awful lot of folders um, and other stuff like that so that's really really cool I like that now one of the other things I want to look at is rather than referencing stuff that we've already got in here uh, now I when I found this particular add-on um, I found somebody who was talking about their favorite add-ons just on YouTube and I'm really sorry I've forgotten I have searched and I cannot find the video again um, because I wanted to give them a shout out to them because they freely gave away some of the resources that they use in their GM screen and I wanted to let you know that um, that's where I got these resources I'm about to show you but for the life of me I cannot find them again so if um, if anybody knows who that is or in fact if, if that person happens to ever watch these videos apologies um, you did say they were free for us to use and borrow from you and you gave us a link for them very much appreciated uh, what am I talking about I'm just babbling okay I'm gonna drag over from my other screen I was hoping that would work oh doesn't why not I thought I could just drag and drop that in there how interesting uh, can I copy and paste it in no oh I was sure this was a drag and drop kind of situation hey remember we're here playing we're working things out <laughs> badly um, so what I what was what I'm trying to put in there is they dropped in uh, their comments a whole bunch of reference sheets so for example here's a reference about you know um, DC checks and things like that and the various skills you can do you know somebody says, oh can I do this and you need to work out the DC of it it just gives you that guide so it's a good reference um, better combat descriptions I like this one um, most of it are the DCs and things like that I'm, I'm happy to work those out on the fly but we do tend to all of us human nature we tend to use words we're familiar with again and again and again um, you know if we're talking about taking fire damage we talk about somebody you know oh you're burning it's in you know might say it's but intense burning but we tend to use the same words but look at this we you know it reminds us that we could be using the word searing or blistering or you know reduced ash incinerated it's been vaporized you know there's a blaze coming from the next room all these different words that might be better to use than our defaults that just add a lot more flavor like this you know these postures these swaggers or these slouches and they're talking about you know related to their you know to their health so you can describe somebody you know their armor has big gouges in it you know it's like they've clearly been in combat um, they sound pained um, you know all of those sorts of things I think it's really good it's a really nice little thing here um, but that doesn't help us without <laughs> how do we get them in here because uh, that's only doing that what have I done I'm sure I tried this and it was like yeah, yeah I'll just drag and drop them in is it because I need to do I can I drag them in directly and drop them in here maybe not is it because I need to create a journal entry Because this might be just a really easy way to do it. I just can I now just dump that in there? No, I can't. That's fine. <laughs> just fine. Um, image, the new image. Oop. Call that abilities. Create that new page. Now I've got this page. Can I jump this in there? I'm just trying to find the ways that we can cheat it and make it really quickly to do stuff. We can't, but I can go to image source. Uh, and then I can find things um, so if I go to my a new folder I created DM folder of stuff I've called it just to try and organize a little bit uh, and I've got this DM tools and here are those references that I've got here so ability reference sheet open select that save entry ah uh, yes brilliant save entry so there we've got this now as a uh, as a journal entry so now if I drag it from our journal section 
pong there it is nice and easy now i don't really want that search pages bit there oh look yeah i can should have actually said that before doing it but uh, yeah compress that arrow and i can shrink that uh, we need this to be a bit bigger so let's make this uh uh, span two rows so it's down a bit that's still quite small again depends on your monitor on you know how much space you'll need these to take up um, probably don't need that to take up three but it does need to go across so I'm going to take that to be two and two okay um, can I make this bigger within here because again on my oh but I can click it and it pops out look at that huge if I need it to pop out there's a magnifying glass that's for searching multiple pages etc um, if I do give it this extra row as well will it make the whole thing bigger and more visible let's check okay it's giving it more space but it doesn't actually make the image itself bigger only clicking on it will do that um, is that an edit is there any options in here where I can potentially display title page might say no it gets rid of that top bit there's nothing i can see here to make the image protect bigger um, i can send it to chat that's useful click that oh look there it is appears in chat i didn't know it did that uh, so i'm quite, quite excited i think this is a really good tool this one uh, and show players image create a player viewable handout uh, uh, no will show the image only i think that means it will show the image only um, or now will show the image only I suspect it used to do something else I don't want to do that right now um, I love the fact it just said showed the content um, to the players when I said no uh, but that's really cool I like that I like that a lot um, and we can do that with any of the other ones we've got here the better combat descriptions uh, the condition state reference sheet this is another one that came from the same gentleman who's uh, unfortunately I can't find where they are Talk about size categories, how much they take up, XP advancement, uh, weather and temperatures. Uh, they've got random encounter chances here that works for them. They've got <laughs> names of NPCs for any of those DMs out there where they decide to walk into somebody's house. That you're like, what the hell are you doing in there? And they go up to somebody and say, so who are you? What's your name? What do you do? And as a DM, we tend to panic going, blimey, I've got to come up with names off the top of my head. So I quite like this. They've got kind of like this shortcut table they can just come straight to uh they've got names of taverns so if they ran yeah, randomly end up in a town or they go looking for another pub you're not expecting they've just got some prompts there they can just pull one straight from here that's quite nice um i tend to be a little bit more prepared with things like the big buildings like inns and stuff so i'm not sure this particular page is that useful to me but i do like the condition states you know what does it mean if they're prone how does that actually write? So disadvantage when they're attacking. Uh, you know, disadvantage on attack rolls and attackers have advantage um, to attack them, etc. So that can be quite useful. That might be something you like. Um, player combat actions. What are actions? What kind of things are in bonus actions? What kind of things as reactions? So again, for new players and new DMs, these things can be really, really handy my only problem with this no not problem that's the wrong word my only thing with this is is if we go to one of our characters uh, let's open sorryman um it kind of tells us already what what uh, what we can do with regard to you know one action etc um so i would be <coughs> encouraging my players to know what their actions are their bonus actions and things and in fact in fairness it's not quite so clear on here going to segue completely uh, for a moment just on that topic we're going all over the place um, I mean I'm quite excited about this um, let me have a look at uh, I'm going to pull up a character sheet from D&D Beyond it happens to be Haley. what I like about the D&D Beyond characters is you have your action page here and it tells you everything that takes a full action whether it's combat it's got all of your actions that you can do in combat dodge grapple um, and anything else you can do that takes a full action 
It's then got a separate tab for bonus actions. So everything this character can do as a bonus action, Shield Master Shove, the spells that can be used as a bonus action. Okay, so different from spells that can be used as a full action. Uh, and then there's a reaction tab as well. So again, what can Haley, this particular character, do as part of a reaction? And I really, really like that. And I think for new players going, right, you know, click your action tab. You're going to get to do one of those things, one of those things if you have anything, um, and then we can see what the reactions are. So I really like that. It's a bit of a segue, and we don't see that as clearly on here. So maybe, maybe that um, action economy one, this one might be useful for you as a newer player, a new DM, just make that slightly bigger. Right, the other ones I pulled off were this one, a voice acting reference. You know, you can roll a percentile and go, oh, right, this person's got, he got a farmer's accent. They're going to talk a little bit like that, you know, and, and, and that way you can just add that flavor really quickly. Uh, how many of you are now laughing at my farmer voice? Um, I think being British, some of these are much easier to do than others. Uh, I'm not going to do an Irish accent. That's going to offend somebody. An Australian accent. Oh, that was terrible. I lived in Australia for a while, so uh, I should be able to do that. American accent and things. I prefer a French accent yeah uh, amusing not necessarily very politically correct uh, and the last one on here that I have taken from the gentleman who very kindly shared it is look while well, I'm a reference shopping guide all the prices and stuff for common things they might want to go to so there they are mid-adventure and one of them says I'm just going to pop into a shop and buy some new armor it's like really really out of the blue you're going to do that we've got some of that stuff here we've got goods and services um you know and different things like that standard exotic languages if we need it so this is really only any of those we saw how we did it for this one ability reference that's definitely one that i would have available we can chuck it in there so gm screen is it useful i think this is i wouldn't say critical but I think from an organisational point of view for the DM, it's really, really good, uh, especially if you don't have a second screen. Uh, if you've got available a second screen on your computer, you might say, oh, I don't need it. I've got a second screen on that. We copied journals over. I just want to go and see if we can copy stuff directly from the SRD. Let's, let's just pick an item. Let's pick some food. What happens if I dump that in there? Yeah, that works. So we can jump straight from there as well, which is good. Um, if I go to D&D Beyond, um, have I got anything in here that I've downloaded? We've downloaded those random items. We know items work. I just did one. There we go. We can dump that in there. Um, there's a lot of stuff I haven't ported. Can we dump spell? We can dump spells in there. We can pretty much dump anything in there. That's really, really good. Really useful. Um, yeah. So, um, if you're planning to use this, I'm not sure why you wouldn't, but if you're not, let us know why you're not using it. Have you got something better, something different? Do you have a different way of running your games rather than using a DM screen? Uh, and if you are using it, what kind of stuff are you putting on here? You know, how are you organizing it? Um, is it things like these references? Is it things like NPCs? Um, yeah, it'd be really interesting to know how other people are using it, if you are. Uh, that's it, guys. That's all for this one. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Like that. Take care, everyone.